Kids. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. No, this is not a filter. It's my actual, um, a real life crown. When I was in, um, when I went to a yoga retreat earlier this spring, the first thing that they did was initiate us to the um, the retreat, and they did so by crowning us with floral headset and I am wearing it today one of my friends and I my good friend Alicia Sidoris we do a morning guided meditation and the name of the 21 day meditation challenge that we lead together is called more miracles please so we're teaching around miracles and how to manifest miracles and bring miracles into your life. Uh, we're training a lot from the book, A Course in Miracles, as well as the workbook from A Course in Miracles. It's daily, uh, it's really beautiful. It's so cool. There's, there's about 12 of us in the container on a private Facebook group and Alicia teaches from, from divine guidance as well as from the book A Course in Miracles. We do, she does a lot of teaching from David Hawkins um, and then with the teaching each day, we do an embodied guided meditation to really not just learn on a mental level what is happening in miracle manifestation things, but actually em embodying it. Your body is like most of your, your being, your existence is your physical flesh, bones, blood, everything that is you is beyond just the mind. So we learn to embody how to manifest miracles. We teach the body because the body is usually, usually the thing that holds us back from manifesting the miracles. It's not so much the mind. I mean, the mind is important. It's good to know how the how to's of manifesting miracles. We definitely want to soothe the mind in that way and give it resources, knowledge, education, tools. Everything starts in the mind. And it's important that we learn it through the body. This is why um, in the up upcoming attunement class that I have coming up this weekend is all of the training. I used to do it this way, you guys. I just, I'm just going to riff today. Tiffany had a little blurring fart moment. She's in a different time zone. She scheduled it for 4 p.m. Eastern, and I think she's in Wisconsin, which is actually where I'm from. In Central Time, she realized, hey, it's 4 p.m. Eastern already here in Southern Indiana. And she was still at a brewery where there wasn't enough signal and not just, not really the ideal. She was with some people. And anyway, that's where she is. We're here together. Thank you for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just totally gonna riff. So anyway, going back to the upcoming attunement class and why I changed it. Why did I change it? <laughs> this flower, I'm pretty sure, is just kind of broken. It's not supposed to be there, you guys. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying. I'm really trying. Let me know if you're watching. Let me know if you're checking the replay, though. Like, I always am super curious. Sometimes people message me um, a few days after the replay, and I'm like, oh, they, I bet they watched the IG Live. Well, let me know if you're watching the replay, guys. Um, I would love to, love to hear all about it. So yes, the upcoming Reiki attunement class that I have been teaching, I've been teaching Reiki since 2018, 2019. So coming up on three years now, um, I've attuned dozens of people how to do Reiki healing. Anybody from oh, mosquito bites, you guys don't mind me. Don't mind me. Who? Well, anybody else like out in the woods this week, this summer? Ha <laughs> Look at, I made a note for myself. I'm such squirrel, such a squirrel today. It's my brain. But anyway, I made a note of my hand and I'm like, post, post what? Like, I'm like, this, this note isn't even helping me and it's giving me more anxiety. Just kidding. It's not really. It's just giving me more mental confusion. Anyway, I've been doing Reiki um, attunements. Which, if you think about attunement, think about a guitar. You tune the sound to the frequency of your instrument. You tune, you tune the instrument to 
be at a certain f frequency, a certain sound so that it sounds beautiful and amazing. And the very attunement of Reiki is the same thing. It's the same, same concept, same idea. So I'm sure you're familiar with the idea that everything in our universe, everything, everything, everything in our universe is energy. Everything's energy. Everything. So that means you yourself are frequency. That also means that stones, crystals, they hold a vibrational essence. I'm sure you're familiar with the fact that um, sound is a frequency. We just talked about sound. It's being, it's, you can hear it. Right now we're listening to some beautiful, amazing flutes in the background here. You can hear it. It exists. We know it's there. We just don't see it. It's kind of like the idea of faith. Like you don't see faith, but you feel it. Like you know if you have faith or not and it's okay. So <laughs> I'm just dropping crystals on the floor. They're, they're rose quartz, by the way. Um, everything's energy. So these stones hold a frequency. There's a vibrational resonance to this stone. Actually, this is smoky quartz rather, which is good because I need this one. <laughs> and the reason I know I need this stone is very, very interesting and fascinating. I am so excited to be here with you guys today. Uh, this device, it's called a Healy. It was invented by a company. Actually, it was, this very technology was invented by NASA our astronauts use the same exact technology um, to help them when they went to space. Space sickness is a thing. It's probably like motion sickness if I had to venture to guess. But NASA invented this device. It's clear. It uses a type of crystal. This crystal is tied into technology that taps into the body's frequency. Hey, camera, and he's in the tractor. I wonder what tractor you're in this this day. Glad you're here tuning in. Nice to see you, brother. Um, I'm a squirrel brain today, you guys. Please bear with me. I'm sure it has to do with the moon and the stars and hormones and just many factors. But this technology i'm gonna bring this full circle just hang out with me for a minute i'll bring this back we'll bring it home guys we'll bring it home though this technology taps into the field of a human being because guess what we're frequency we're energy the this taps into the quantum field of us humans valerie what's quantum field go look it up on youtube but basically, if I had to put it into my own words, the quantum field is your aura, the energy. You know, when somebody walks into the room, you don't even have to know, they don't even have to say anything. You can be at your desk working away and they will step into the room. You know their energy. You know if they're happy, sad, enlightened, motivated, uninspired or not. It's That's the quantum field. You, you can feel their energy. So NASA has this technology it reads the aura. It reads the quantum field of a human being. It actually reads over... Hi, Marianne GG. Welcome to this IG Live. Glad you're here. And it, it reads over 140,000 different resonances and frequencies. That is the human aura or body consciousness of the being. And it says, okay... This is the ones that are blocked. Based on which ones are blocked, it has technology to send frequency. So it's sending frequency, say it's running on my cell. First, it reads my aura, my quantum field, and then it send, It knows, okay, this is what our aura is. These are the energies that are blocked or not, not vibrating the way that they're healthy. And then it sends healing, it sends a vibrational resonance to me or whoever I'm sending it to, to clear those pathways, to unblock those meridian lines, acupuncture lines, chakras, 
nadis, as the yogis say. And anyway, the reason I knew I needed smoky quartz was because this technology says, hey, her body had most likely crown chakra blocked. Smoky quartz, quartz goes to crown chakra. Her crown chakra was blocked. And, you know, it, it knows it's programmed to say, hey, you need some rose, you need some clear smoky quartz. Smoky quartz is what it specifically said, which is really cool because my boyfriend recently brought me a bunch of smoky quartz, like last week. So it's like he already unconsciously, subconsciously knew anyway. Um, so that's really cool. Anyway, Dreamweaver, a company in Germany, patent this technology from, from our government because, you know, why would, why would the government want us to know about technology that actually heals us? Hmm, maybe because it would put them out of business. Maybe because, oh, you know, the whole, uh, the whole um, deep state insurance, the pharmaceuticals, big business, they might actually get ran out by some little, little person like me that knows about this and does Reiki healing from my home and then uses these technologies that actually work without crazy radical side effects that are ancient technologies that the Egyptians knew about, that Tesla knew about, that back in the early 1900s, there's this universal life force energy that was discovered by Dr. Nikola Tesla. And, you know, all of a sudden people start disappearing and like, oh, all of a sudden they were killed or they were poisoned. Oh, somebody poisoned the water hole. Somebody that actually learned about this stuff died randomly. I don't think so. I don't think so, people. Like, talk about coincidences not being a coincidence. Everything in this universe happens for a reason. So anyway, going back to where are we? I'm, I'm bringing it back, you guys. Look at me. I'm in the flow today. My flow state is so good. I think it's the flower, the fake flower crown. I think it's the crown. So this, this weekend I have the upcoming Reiki attunement, like we were talking. Everything in this universe is energy, including sound, including the very Wi-Fi that has you sitting in this chair or, or you're, wherever you're at, you know, let me know that you're here, what you're sitting in, where you're located, where you're tuning in, tuning in from. Tuning, attunement, like did that just happen? Do you see what just happened there? That energy, we're connected. There's everything is energy, you guys. Like sound, this where you're tuning in from. You're the Wi-Fi. There's a there's one of those giant 5G towers right outside my window here in southern rural Indiana that I can see the tower. I don't see vibrations coming off of the towers, but I know they exist. And the Reiki is no different. There's no difference. Like, even our and even our emotions. Emotions are energy in motion. Our emotional state is an energetic frequency. So here's a concept for you to understand. Is when you go through transformation. Maybe it's maybe it's you've let go of a limiting belief. Maybe you decided to make some goals and you start working towards them. Maybe it's to get health, healthy and wealthy. And you say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to move into this place where I'm making 10 K a month. And you just like smash your goals. Like you're just working on goals, on goals, on goals. And you get excited about it. You get become liberated. You become free. You did all the things and you showed yourself. You got confident. You gained self-worth. And you improved your vibrational frequency. And all of a sudden, maybe not all of a sudden so suddenly, you start hanging out with different people. Maybe the people that used to be your friends in high school, middle school, they're still doing their thing. They're just living their okie dokie kind of, maybe, you know, maybe they're content with it. You know, maybe their life's mission isn't, isn't to have the mission that you have and that's fine. However, you're here, your friends are here or they're over here or, you know, time and energy isn't linear. They're over here, you're over there and you just don't, like, it's like a radio station. You just don't communicate anymore because you're on 
Wax 104.5, and they're on cow 97.1. You can't, can, there's like some, like, yes, you're both energy, but it's not, look at this flower, it's like going crazy. There, there's these energies that are not just, they're just not crossing. They're just not crossing anymore. So then you just get new friends that hang out at Wax 104.5. And then you totally vibe. That happened to me just today. Just today, I had a woman reach out to me. Actually, two different women this happened. One asked me if I wanted to be a part of a retreat. And I'm like, perhaps. And, you know, it's so cool how she asked. And I'm just super interested. I'm putting on a retreat of my own. Lisa, hello, girl. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I hope you're well, girl. Um, anyway, it just worked out so divinely, you know, the right people show up. And then I had another woman ask me to join a community group where they discuss herbalism, the astrology, holistic healing, nutrition, um, energy healing. And I'm like, hmm, coincidence. I'm a nutrition coach. I'm an energy healer. I do yoga. I'm a yoga teacher. And somebody else asked me to be a part of a group where, energy healing and all of the things that I do are are the tribe, are the community. Coincidence? I think not. Are my friends from high school watching this Instagram live? No. No, they're not. If you are, if you are, please say hello. Please say hi. Because I'm glad you're here. I'm not, I've never like not liked you. It's just the fact that, hey, we just maybe are on a different path, on a different timeline, and now we've come together all of a sudden, just like eagle pose in yoga. You know, good old eagle, you guys can't see, I'm wearing a dress, but I just balanced on one foot right there. <sighs> so anyway, everything in our universe is energy. I had no idea what I was gonna talk about when I got on here. Tiffany Messett calls me like two minutes before and was like, Val, I can't make it on the live, I'm like, that's fine, girl. I'll find something to riff about. We never know what we're going to talk about anyway. We just kind of bounce off of each other. And and now we're working on creating a podcast with this very Instagram live. Um, going back to this idea of attunement. What's a Reiki attunement? And what is Reiki? Or if, you're, if you're watching me and maybe you've been following me for a minute and you're curious about Reiki, what it is, whatnot. Let me just say this. Okay, I've been I've been going on about en everything being energy, right? I hope you're familiar with this concept. If you're not, go check out some YouTube videos. Go read the book. Um, oh, what would be a good one? Uh, Source will give me a source will tell me a book that you can read that will really help you understand this. The reason I found out and understood about this concept of energy healing was through Abraham Hicks. So you might check out the book in the Vortex by Abraham Hicks. That was really enlightening, a good experience. And Abraham Hicks has some really cool content on YouTube, by the way. You can get for free. So Reiki Energy, which by the way, BT Dubs, I actually just put some free content into a group that I offer on Facebook. It's, it's, it's called Everything Holistic Community. It's Everything Holistic Community. Go find it on Facebook. Um, you can also find it by messaging me. Send me a message. I don't think it's in my link tree, actually. But in that group, I just dropped some free content about the history of Reiki and Yusui Sensi and how, how it came to be that Reiki was founded and how it got to this planet and why, why and how people are actually doing it. Um, it's free within this group I have. So it's this whole, it's this whole lecture I just put up about the healing history, the history of healing Reiki and why it's, why it's a thing and how it, how it even exists at all in the way that it's known today. So Reiki, it's a Japanese healing technique. I'll tell the story. Why not? I just told it on this group. I'll tell it to you now. If you want more details, join the group. And if you're looking for people to hang out with that have the same curiosity and interest in holistic wellness, energy, spirituality, um, this unseen world, you know, maybe you just feel like an outsider, join the group, guys. Like, hang out with a community. Get your tribe. Tribe up, tribe up, tribe up. 
So Reiki was founded by Yusui Sensei. He, um, somewhere over by Tokyo. I can't, you know, I just did this training, but I was reading it from the training manual. And it goes on to say that Yusui Sensei was in Japan and he was learning this enlightenment meditation technique where basically you have to be willing to starve and maybe even die in order to achieve a certain level of enlightenment. I believe it is called Shinpin, Shinpin Din or something like that. It's a form of enlightenment where you feel peace and tranquility all the time. You, you feel enlightenment all the time. So he was following his guides, his leaders, his sages to learn this type of enlightenment through his, through his journey. And in the last day of it, he was to go to the top of Mount Karama, somewhere near Japan, somewhere near Tokyo. I couldn't tell you the exact name of the mountain. But like I said, if you want the details, join the community. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, like elbow to rib cage. Join the community if if you feel called to, if your heart says yes, join the community. Anyway, Chad, you're in it, so you're fine. Go go watch the replay. Yeah. So he was he went up to this mountain. Um basically sat on the mountain in the sun and felt this light beam into his third eye. And he basically died and came back to life. He didn't actually die, but he was so out of it from not eating or drinking for such a long time that he like lost consciousness. And somehow after this light beamed down from above, he came back, he came back to it. This happened in the early 1900s. And he felt this new form of enlightenment that he thought his Shin Pindin teachers um, were talking about, which is the reason he joined this society in the first place. So he was running down the hill, he was running, and he stubbed his toe on a rock. And just like anybody would do, you know, what's the first thing you do when you hurt? Bump your elbow, what do you do? You place your hand, you nick your shin, oh my shin. Well, Yusui Sensei, he's no different, he's a human. He, he stubbed his toe, he reaches down, holds onto his toe, and all of a sudden, it healed. And he realized not only did he have such an awakening, but he got healing hands to where when he held his toe, it no longer felt pain. So that is the history of where Reiki came from at the most simple essence. In my studies in, you know, having been a Reiki practitioner since 2016, reading books on it and studying it and working on mastery towards it one day at a time, I realized that there perhaps have been other versions of Reiki in our earth plane with just a different human name. You know, even in the Bible, they talk about how Jesus healed the leper and anybody can do what I can do. And I, you know, I hear that in Sunday school when I was a little tyke and I'm like, you know, just like, eh, who cares? You know, like I'm not interested. I'm more interested in the free candy. I'm interested in seeing how I can get in trouble and get kicked out of this Sunday school class than actually paying attention or integrating anything that I learned in Sunday school. But in the Bible, it does say, I, maybe somebody can help me out here with what verse this actually is, but I've heard it and my, my pastor say it. Anybody can do what I can do. Jesus healed the leper. He placed his hands on the leper. The leper was healed. What do I do here in this very space in my home? Well, let me just tell you. I have somebody lay down. And, you know, if somebody gets Reiki done for me, they lay down on this table. Place their head here, facing up, laying on their back. Place this beautiful eye pillow. And let's just do a pretend session really quick. Um, literally, Reiki is, is, you know, I use the energy to send healing to the human. Imagine this is the thing. This is the human. I place hands. It heals. I actually had a client just today tell me that the amount of relaxation that they get from a Reiki session 
you know, this person meditates on a very, very regular basis. This particular client is going through chemotherapy treatment, has actually died and has seen the light and has seen the dark contrast here, white, dark, what is happening, um, and has died and has learned about duality and polarity and has learned about enlightenment. And even him, with all that he knows about meditation and bliss and enlight enlightenment and inner peace, he says, says still that the amount of relaxation that he had, he gains from a Reiki session is still not what he can get through meditation. Um, I also had somebody, uh, I did a remote healing today, which I'll explain that here in a little bit, but I did a remote session on one of the clients that's in my program, Limitless, go apply for this program in the in my bio, I have a link tree. So you click the link tree and you can apply to, to this program for free or jump on a call with me and see if this is a good program for you. Anyway, this woman is in Limitless and she was getting her remote session done. She lives in Southern California. We met at the retreat where I got these flowers. You know, it's coming full circle. I'm a real human. I'm not just making this stuff up. Anyway, she was telling me how... She is, you know, we are both in the same meditation group. That's how we actually met each other was um, through this meditation group. They offered a retreat and we went, met, had the time of our lives. She asked what I do. I asked what she do. We connected. She's like, oh my gosh, I could use the assistance that you offer with nutrition. So much so. And I'm like, okay, cool. So this lady meditates on the very regular basis, like every morning. I see her in the in the live community. I know I know she's doing it. She's doing the things. But she told me same thing as this client I had earlier today that was here in person, is that she does not achieve the amount of relaxation that she does when she meditates, even with Kundalini style, even with breath work. She says she has visions and ideas and creativity and knowingness from a healing remotely from me. Like it's like these visions that come in into her field. And that doesn't happen in meditation. That doesn't even happen even in dreaming or lucid dreaming. I actually had a client last week, a remote Reiki session with a, with a woman. And we've been working together now for about four months. Five months perhaps. And she recently had an experience with ayahuasca. It is peyote. It's a, it's a medicine. It's a plant medicine that the, um, Amazonians correct. I don't know much about the history of ayahuasca other than that. It's a plant medicine and it releases DMT. And this client had just done an ayahuasca ceremony facilitated. It was an overnight thing. And how she was explaining the ayahuasca ceremony to me last week was exact parallel to what my client said today about, you know, all these visions come through. It's like there's like going through a TV program. You know, we talked about tuning into the TV program. Well, anyway, she was in Reiki session and she was like, it was like going through these channels like it was like clicking the remote, channel five, channel six, and these flashes would come in, they would go out, come in, come out. And I had this other client last week tell me the same thing happened when she was getting doing the ayahuasca. So when, when you get Reiki done, it really does penetrate and open your third eye, which releases DMT, serotonin, feel-good hormone. It puts your body in a deep state of theta, um, theta brainwave length, which is the same as REM sleep. That's why if you're dreaming at night, it's good because you're in REM sleep. You're in that theta brainwave where you're washing your brain. So one hour of Reiki is equivalent to eight hours of deep sl REM sleep. So anyway, that was the experience that they had with, with the remote session and with Reiki. So I'm going on to speak and drink water right now. Give me a minute, this will be worth your wait. <sighs> Whew. Decompress Valerie. Woo, sah. Anyway, Reiki. 
you know the history. I just told you some stories. What is Reiki? What is what is the definition? Well, the book meaning of Reiki is it's a Japanese healing technique that uses life force energy to clear and align energy pathways in the body to promote deep healing and relaxation. That's the book terminology definition of Reiki. My version, which it was so beautiful. I was swimming in Scottsburg, Sellersburg, Indiana this weekend. I was doing the back crawl out to some caves in the water and it was so wonderful. And now I'm getting stuck in this veil. Veil. Veil is being ripped. Anyway, um, and I felt just so at peace. And anyway, I connected with some really cool beings. I was in alignment with myself and therefore I was aligning with other people that were in alignment and that was great. And they, you know, I had this person who is definitely a star seed who totally is into their tapped into the unseen realms of life after dealing with a life of addiction. Anyway, he asked me, what is, how do you explain Reiki healing? And I explain Reiki like this. This is my definition that I gave to this human being this weekend. And I'll give it to you now. Is Reiki releases everything that blocks us from love. When we let Reiki heal us, it brings us back to the truth of the child that we really are, this higher divine self that we really are. Remembering your childhood, remember back to when you were a young youngster and you just ran this world like, you know, nobody could tell you. There's a picture of me when I was four, five years old and I'm like this. And, <laughs> and that child, that child doesn't, didn't care about what my parents would think. I remember there was one time my grandma was telling me how to put my dishes away as a five-year-old. And I was like, you can't tell me what to do, grandma. You know, I didn't have any expectations of outcomes. I didn't like limit myself. I didn't block my throat. I spoke my truth as a child. And I believe Reiki tells us or teaches us or allows us to release all of the things that, that block us from that, that person that we were as a little child, that one that was just like totally a, like a child of God, you know, to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be like a child and Reiki helps us get all this stuff out of the way. Maybe it's physical. Maybe it's pain in our leg. Maybe it's sciatic pain. There's so many gi ginormous flies in my house right now. It's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. I live next to a chicken farm and I have chickens. So maybe that's why. I'm not sure. I've never had such annoying big flies around. But it block. It's We block. You know, we create these blocks. It's Whether it's indoctrination or domestication from society, from you know, beliefs, you know, people, leaders, whatever, they weren't trying to, but it just happens. It's ha It happens. I mean, in fact, we're on this planet, we're on this earth to learn love. And how can you learn love if you're already in love? Like if you're, there's something so beautiful about evolution. Like how would things be so blissful and happy if we just already have everything to begin with like there's a real a real excitement and joy and bliss in enlightenment by having to overcome obstacles and blocks to love and lack of love to get to it i mean it's like saying okay i'm on earth to experience white but how do you experience white without having black like you have to have black in order to know what white is. Because if you want to come to, you, do, you, do you pick up what I'm laying down here? So anyway, because we're on earth, because we're earthlings, we're here to evolve. And Reiki helps us. It's another tool that we can use to release blocks from love. Whether it's, yeah, physical, maybe it's pain, maybe it's back pain, maybe it's shoulder pain. Headaches. Headaches are a very common one that I have clients tell me that they've been relieved of. Overthinking, perfectionistic, worries, um, money blocks, 
mm, what else? Like emotional blocks. If sometimes we have trapped emotions, especially us females, we hold a lot of emotion in our lower body. Um, you know, around guilt and shame in the womb. The the males actually hold a ton of of energy right between the nut sack and the anus. So there's like right at the base of the spine, there's so many trapped emotions and like, you know, society tells us like, you know, be ashamed of yourself. And there's just so many things that, you know, can cause us these trapped emotions where Reiki helps lift it. And you don't even have to try or you don't have to do anything. You don't have to like force it away. You don't have to be able to meditate well. You don't have to know the history. You don't even have to know why it works. You just have to have 4% faith that it will work. I have the rest of the faith that it works. You show up for a healing, whether it's in person or remotely. Find a healer you trust and love. Go to them and the Reiki healing literally lifts what is not serving you. So... That's my really longer than life definition of what Reiki is. And that that's what it is. So if you break down the word Reiki, Re, R-E-I, K, Reiki, the second part of the word is K-I. Re is Japanese. It means life or source energy and key means the energy of your your field like we talked about earlier key is like japanese for the quantum field the aura or you could think like in qigong or um martial arts they harness their chi you know they do the they do the qigong thing and they move in such a way that they're like balling this energy <laughs> And then moving it, I'm not really super certain on how, um, how it works, but I do know that yoga uses a lot of this energy too with the chakras. Are you guys familiar with the chakras? Let me know in the comments. I'm just totally riffing today. So I hope that you guys are hey, having fun, enjoying this content. Let me know if this is something that you know, it's worth my time and sharing. Sharing is caring. It really is. It's your moral obligation to share something that you love with other people. Um, we can't keep it to ourselves. Another way to manifest miracles is sharing. Anyway, Reiki. It takes Rei, source energy. Source energy. Sun energy. Universal life force energy, the energy that Nikola Tesla said, hey, you can have this infinite amount of energy if you just do it this way. Oh, and then the government said, oh, it just disappears, falls off the face of the earth. Coincidence? Not even. But anyway, this life force energy goes to the body, to the key energy. I am not more, it's this, Reiki does not come from me. Reiki is channeled because, like I talked about at the beginning, I was attuned to it. My energy pathways were cleared to where I call upon Reiki. I call upon the creators, the the seventh plane, the, the ascended masters. I just call on something greater than myself to send the Reiki to, to the client, to the person. And the really amazing, beautiful thing is, does anybody know what prayer is? Have you guys ever heard of prayer? Do you know what that is when you cross your hands and you ask and it is given? Well, because Reiki comes from not me, but source itself, I just literally ask because I have free will. I have free will. And I'm attuned to this energy. I've been cleansed of the of the blocks that would block me. Anybody can do it. Jesus said, anybody can do what I do. So anyway, I call upon the source, the sorcerer, the sorcery, and say, hey, Reiki flow. Just, it's not a question. I'm just saying, hey, Reiki flow. As I'm speaking, this energy already comes out my hands, comes out the, the hand chakras, the energy. Our bodies are literally a portal of God. We are God. There's a God within us. 
anyway, we just open up and, and we send it when we, when a practitioner calls on Reiki and sends it to, to the client in front of me. It also can be sent to anything that, that you'd like, whether it's another human, whether it's food, whether it's a pet, your home, your business, your finances, your goals, your dreams, your desires. And then it clears their pathways. Sometimes it feels like deep relaxation. Sometimes the, the clients will tell me about energy, like heat or cool, moving around. Sometimes they have visualizations or like I said, you know, just deep relaxation or the, it's like the motion picture. Sometimes they feel like they're swimming in an ocean of holy love. What is happening with this necklace? Oh, it's the, the back. So <laughs> I'm getting, as we we're on this thing, I'm getting messages from my enlightened human tribe. Thank you guys so much, so much for the messages. I love, I love the messages. Please, please keep sending love, you guys. Just send love. You know, we talk about like being a star seed or a healer or a Reiki practitioner. Anybody can heal. You don't even need a Reiki attunement to help somebody. Have you ever heard of prayer? Pray. Have you ever heard of unconditional love where you just send unconditional love? You can do that and it works. It works, it works, it works, it works. So, yeah. So Reiki is this, this all-knowing energy that created the world being sent to the physical human form. I do this all day, most days. I send healing. I send blocks from love to humans. And it, over time, Reiki just continues to heal me too. As a practitioner, when I give Reiki, I feel the healing. I feel it as much in myself as the person that's receiving it from me. It's just literally the most enjoyable thing. It's amazing. They're, the Reiki, you know, they feel it. The deep releases, the, the deep sense of sinking into the table or into their surface. During the session, yeah. And the amazing, amazing thing, oh, I love this, this makes my heart so happy, is I've had a client who's come to me one time. They came to my office when I still worked at Hypnotic Hair Salon here in town in North Vernon, and was like, can I try some of your Reiki? And at the time, I was just getting started. I charged 30 bucks an hour for it. I was like, yeah, of course. Of course, lady. We were good friends, we knew each other. She did hair at the salon. She tried it one time. She's lost weight. She went on a new fitness journey. She's totally changed her lifestyle after one session. Was it me? Was it a coincidence? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I had another woman. She came to me twice. I seen her in my fitness class yesterday. Was she somebody that would do fitness before? I don't know, but my intuition is pretty good. You know, you can kind of sense. This lady didn't seem super fit when I first met her, and now she's working out on a very regular basis. Coincidence? I don't know. I also find that in this local rural area that I live in, I look out my window, and every person, every home that I see from my, from my home, from my window, those people have come to me to get the attunement. They, I didn't go to their house. They found me through mutual people who sent mutual people to some mutual people. And all of a sudden they're becoming Reiki healers. So interesting. Such an interesting web that we weave. So the attunement is amazing. I have it coming up on Saturday this weekend. Um, literally, if you wanted to get signed up, I'm... I'm not offering this, but I am offering this. I have enough materials to let two more people join. So if you'd like to sign up, go ahead and sign up. The link is in my bio. I actually opened it up because I have two extra manuals and I had some space open. So the universe has available space for you if you feel called to sign up or check this out 
literally check out the link tree in the bio of my Instagram, or you can check it out on my Facebook. Like I said, if you want some free content, more about the history about Reiki and Yusui Sensi and where it came from, go check it out on Facebook, Everything Holistic Community. I also drop a lot of really cool content in there about nutrition, about yoga. There's other community people. If you're interested in this, you're going to meet other people who are interested, which builds your belief, which builds the life experience that you get to live and have. We're only here for a short time, so make the most of it. Meet people who actually believe what you want. Like, believe what you believe. You know, life's too short to be hanging out with people that aren't interested in having the same goals as what you have. Hang out with the people that support you, uplift you, give you life. That'll help your healing. Your tribe, your vibe attracts your tribe and go find them. Don't wait for the people that you have in your field now to come with you. Just go... Go, hang, go go places where you want to go, and then you'll meet your people. Like, the right people always show up. I noticed this. When I let go, when I went to Sedona, I didn't know. A, I knew the one girl for, through the meditation class, and I knew my mentor. And there was about 12 other women that I did not know. And when I went to Sedona by myself, knew those two women. But I told myself, I was like, you know, I'm going to go to this retreat. And I'm going to just stay focused inwardly. I'm going to do the yoga. I'm going to participate fully. But I'm not going to do as much reaching out as I used to do. I used to be the person, you know, I was class clown in every class in high school. When I went to college, I was class clown. And then I went to this um, summer school college um, at a different campus. And I was class clown there too. So when I went to this retreat, it was very different for me to be somebody that wasn't always like making the jokes and trying to be center of attention and class clown. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be inward focused at this retreat and, you know, not try to make friends, but just not force myself into conversations. I'm just going to stay focused inwardly. And I know the right, and I'm, and I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust the universe and say, the right people are coming that you're welcome, Chad. Thanks for being on here. I'm going to see who, see who shows up. I'm going to see who shows up. And you know, by the end of that retreat, every single one of those women had come up to me and started a conversation. Every single one. I didn't reach out to them. I just said, okay, God, you know, trust walk, trust walk. If you, you know, if I really trust you and think that you're my all saving savior, then I'll, then I'll know that the right people will show up into my life. And then all of a sudden these women started coming up to me and said, Hey, you know, this, I can't believe you said that, you know, like we shared in circles and in yoga or somebody would come up to me and be like, wow, I love what you did with your painting or, you know, something like that. And it, it was very beautiful. Instead of pushing, I just let go and let God. So anyway, with that, I, if you guys have any questions, like send them below. If you're watching the replay and you have questions, literally just drop a question. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining me from my home yoga, Reiki. Not really yoga so much here. This is definitely my, I used to do yoga in this room, but now I do um, Reiki healing and there's my tapestry. Love it, love it, love it. Peacock feather, the sign of immortality, spiritual meaning. Namaste, you guys. I'll see you next Tuesday where me and Tiffany are here and we'll be very shortly on podcast format on Spotify. I'm so excited. Have a great, wonderful, amazing rest of your day. And we'll chat soon on a IG Live near you next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.